So today's episode is being sponsored by and in partnership with Love to Dip. Love to Dip is a small business in Detroit, Michigan, where they provide their customers with an experience that your taste buds will never forget. Mine still is reminiscing of the goodness that I've had from them. (laughs) Their treats are not only pretty, but they are fresh, delicious, and made with love. You will enjoy every bite. When you go to lovetodip.com, that's L-O-V-E-I-I-D-I-P.com, you will find Love Pops, also known as Cake Pops, hot cocoa bombs, chocolate dip pineapples, chocolate dip strawberries, fresh fruit arrangements, chocolate or caramel dip apples, or you can get a combination of both. Mm. Chocolate dip pretzel rods, and many more goodies. I've had them. I have them all the time, you know, every time that I I can, you know. Um, It's so good. I swear by these goodies, these treats, these chocolate-covered treats, they are good. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up, so Love to Dip is offering the Kicking It With K. Marie audience 10% off your entire purchase if you're local, but you must use the promo code K. Marie Podcast. K-A-Y-M-A-R-I-E podcast when ordering online or when you or when you direct message them on Instagram. Again, go to love to dip.com or visit their Instagram page at love to dip. Love to dip is a chocolate covered sweet experience. Get them for your mother for Valentine's Day, uh, for your significant other. Trust me, they will love you for it. Now sit back. And enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Kicking It With K. Marie podcast. If this is your first time listening to us, we are a podcast for the culture. Okay, here you'll receive advice. You'll laugh. You'll learn. You'll think, you know, here at the Kicking It K. Marie podcast, we believe that change starts with a single conversation. Okay. Uh, if you're listening to us on a streaming platform such as iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, uh, Pandora, please subscribe and follow and share. And as you can see at the bottom of the um, the, the scroll here, those who are looking at us, um, you can uh, find us on Instagram and Facebook at Marie Podcast. You can email us at um, info at kmariepodcast.com. If you have a question that you want to ask the relationship panel, uh, feel free to do so. And uh, today we are going to be briefly talking about my online dating journey. And... Uh, we have a special guest. You know her. She's a friend of the pod. It's my sister, um, Cameron Elaine. So let me bring her in. Hey, Cam. Hey, everybody. How you doing today, Kay? How you doing? Girl, y'all just don't know the struggle we had trying to <laughs> get this. <laughs> yes, but. Ooh, but. Shine bright like a diamond. Hey. Shine bright like a diamond. He always works it out, right? Always works it out. Thank yes. you for coming on and being our special um, host for this uh, special episode. Thank you. No, no problem. I am a friend of the K Marie podcast. Yes, so. you are. <laughs> so, yes. So just briefly, Cam, just um, just give out your info. You can even plug your because you on another podcast. So plug plug your. I'm about to say plug your issue. <laughs> plug plug your. <yourself. laughs> 
Oh my God. Right now I'm having brain fog. I can't even think right now. Okay. But um, my name is Cameron Elaine. I can be found on Instagram. I am Cameron Kimball on Facebook. Um, right now we're doing uh, a movie that Kay is a part of called Wanted Love. So we will be doing that on February 14th. It will be premiering that in a relationship panel. And you can get your tickets at wantedlove.com. Wantedlovemovie.com. Wantedlovemovie.com. And um, that's it. And I also am on a podcast on Monday nights. Um, I I told you I'm having like a brain fog. This is so ridiculously crazy. Um, We are a podcast out of Detroit, Michigan. Well, not really Detroit, South Hill, Michigan. And um, we have been nominated for one of the top podcasts in Detroit. So you can vote on that. But it's on Ucult TV. So you can go to Ucult TV and look up our uh, podcast. And I can't think of the name of it. And I'm really horrible for that. But anywho, I'll think about it by the time we get off the phone. But anyway, today we're focusing on K. Marie. But before we go there, um, you know, everybody knows starting in season three that before um, when I have guests on the show, we go into a segment called What in the World? So What in the World is basically um, stories from around the world, including the United States, that is just a little strange. And we just talk about it briefly. And um, Cameron? Mm. Okay. So like I'm here. Okay. I'm, I'm not frozen. So, <laughs> a little bit. You are just a little bit. No, um, I'm not so we both, Cam and I, we both like to cook and we can't cook. Okay. So. Cam, burn honey in that kitchen. Don't play no games. Okay. <laughs> right. Our, our mothers raised us right. We know how to cook. So, Cameron, there was a woman in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, her name is Chloe Mitchell. She, girl, she found a scorpion in a bag of broccoli. Okay, you need to stop playing games because no. this <laughs> evening I cooked a keto meal with broccoli and I steamed the broccoli. And if I would have found a scorpion in the broccoli, Heavens to Megatroy, I would have freaked out and probably never wanted to eat broccoli again. But go ahead. So it's an Australian woman says she was shocked to open a package of broccoli from a local supermarket to discover a live scorpion lurking inside. So it says Chloe Mitchell said her father-in-law bought the broccoli from Aldi. <laughs> Uh, in South, New South Wales and, sh- and made a surprising discovery while preparing for a meal. She said she put it on the steamer on the stove then turned around to give it a last few pieces and saw something crawling along the chopping board and it was oh. a scorpion. Girl, I would have fainted and okay. the scorpion would have done its done death. Had to die. You would have had to die. But my thing is you saw the what in the world because you saw a scorpion on the chopping board. Are you sure it didn't get in your house? Do they have scorpions in Australia? Um, you're, or was uh, she in England? Well, yeah, it was. She's a, she's an Australian woman, but it was in it was in the package. Oh, you know, I would have freaked out. You know, stuff can get in factories or whatever. Yeah, but how did it live without air? I don't know. But in the world. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> so, but what, I, what I, would have, I would have freaked out because I seen three packages of Flores and I would have just like, I would have, yeah, it would have died though because I would have took a knife and been like, I would have been a little psycho. You would have yeah. ran out the house, okay? I probably would have fainted because them things are like this and you know they got those tails i know they're poisonous like i said i probably would have hit my kitchen floor and then it probably would have jumped on me and stung me 
Yeah. That's really dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> it would have jumped on you. It probably would have been more scared of you than you were of it. <laughs> but okay. Like you said, what in the world? I would have like ugh. I couldn't imagine. I would have nightmares over that. Right. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. So today's episode is um it's an update because for those who um, know, I signed up to do things a little bit differently this time around, um, which is online dating. Online. And, online dating. And I uh, wanted to document my journey just a little bit um, to give people some encouragement. Um, because I know that when I started this and when I brought Kim Brooks on our show to give us the ins and outs of properly online dating, um, I've had a few people who reached out to me and said that because I am doing this, that they're going to give it a try. So I'm like, oh, so I just feel like it's just right that um, I just briefly give a update from November when we last talked about this so take it away cam well statistics show that online dating is actually on the rise and people are meeting people um so far they say that like 60 percent of people who are going on these online dates are finding success so i think that that's something that's very positive for people moving forward that are thinking about online dating i think that um you know like in your case, how did you find your um, dating site when you decided to explore that avenue? Um, again, when we had uh, Kim Brooks on the show, mm -hmm. we she is a dating online dating coach. Uh, so mm -hmm. she coaches people in doing it the right way. So when I had my one on one with her, she suggested um, two dating online dating outlets for me to try one was an app and the other mm -hmm. one was is a um is a website so that's how you know i i had okay one. so they have dating apps now that's very interesting but i guess i did would kind of like coincide with that so um so so far with your online dating experience how did you decide um was it like really rough for you to go through the um, gentlemen that were um, on your profile that were um, checking you out? How was that process? Girl, let me tell you. So from November, the last time that we, well, the first time that we uh, started this, you know, my online mm -hmm. uh, journey, I believe I mentioned that I, on this one particular app, I had about, let's say, um, I think like 600 and something likes from all types of men like in my local area mm -hmm. and um so after that episode because we taped that episode on november 14th so okay. november 15th i was at work because i can hear kim saying well you know you have to um you know do five reach outs a day uh, that's what she wanted us to do so because i was just looking sporadically so after we taped the show on november 14th i was at mm -hmm. work that monday and um i was just going through i said okay now would be a good time just to go through um uh, some of these likes so at that point on november 15th i had like 800 and something likes from from different wow members. so so you can honestly say that you had success as far as people reaching out to you and as far as you didn't know that the dating pool was so vast did you <laughs> i didn't and while i was scrolling through i was like ugh, you know because i <laughs> i did because i specifically like put down the age range and everything you know my on my thing it says that um because you could put you know if you're looking for a casual relationship or something like that i'm not i wasn't so i put on there you know i'm looking for something long term that can lead into you know so 
so well, some of these guys, you know, on their profile thing, when I click on the ones that like me, you know, I look at them, the ones that I, you know, found interesting, um, they would be young. I'm like, I did not ask for 20 some year olds. You know, and then and you know, at twenty, they're still in play mode. They just want to say that they're ready to I'm do not, something my name more. Ain't Stella. My name ain't Stella. I drop me nobody sugar mama. You know? So <laughs> no Stella, huh? Not yeah. unless you have Stella Rose, honey. <laughs> the wine. <laughs> okay. So you might know, be Stella then. Right. So again, I'm at my desk. I'm just going through, going through. So I see somebody. I'm like, hmm. And then I look at his stuff and I'm like, okay, no, that don't sound right. You know, so I was just like, I was kind of like getting frustrated a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. no good picks for me, for me. And I'm just glad I kept going because I came across a familiar face. Ding, so ding, ding, ding. Oh, okay. <laughs> so let's pause right there. When you say you came across a familiar face, like, so... While you were going through, you were like, I'm quite sure getting discouraged and probably knowing you a tad bit irritated because <laughs> you're like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? Did I make a mistake in doing this or what have you? So what did you feel when you saw the familiar face? So when I saw the familiar face, I was like, really? Because. The last that I knew, you know, he was in a relationship. Um, I've known him from somewhere and we've always had good chemistry, always. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because he had, I saw him because he had clicked, you know, like. So I clicked, well, I, I hit something like I, I, I moved. I moved the, the thing somewhere like up or to the right or something. And it was like match. I was like, oh. I'm like, okay, well, hey, I'm here now. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you kind of did it by mistake, huh? It wasn't anything you were like, you were like, let me just move this little button over here. And it was like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I did want to say something to him. So I'm, I'm glad it did that. So I was like, what you doing on here? And so he like messaged me back, was like, you know, what you doing on here? And uh, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm back in these dating streets, blah, blah, blah. And we've been talking ever since. Oh, okay. So before going into this, would you have ever thought that you would go online and um, date? No. Because even though I I know people who have success mm -hmm. with this, with online dating, uh, I mean, Mary, kids, all of that. And, you know, and, and I know some, you know, who didn't. So my, my, my thing was I was always a traditionalist in that sense because mm -hmm. me as a whole, I'm not a traditionalist. Some things I am. So, but in dating, I was, um, I was in that box. I was in the box. Mm -hmm. So um, when I told my... Kim, my relationship coach, I was like, because, you know, we, we talked like all throughout the day, that day, that night, just everything. Um, oh, you and Kim or you and the suitor? Me and the suitor. Okay. So, um, like I was, <laughs> I had to go, I, went, I had to go to work the next day. I didn't get off. We didn't get off the phone, like until, um, like three in the morning, one night, I had to get up at seven in the morning. Hmm. And another night, it was like five in the morning. <laughs> so, well, well, I can clearly see you have a little glow and you have a little smile on your face, honey, <laughs> compared to um, our last uh, few uh, conversations about this whole dating site thing. Um, so what was the biggest thing that attracted you to your male suitor? Hmm. And he's gonna watch this too. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, the biggest thing that, like I said, because we've always had chemistry, you know, we always like are 
as far as you speaking to him or seeing him in passing? Yes. So you were always just very um, friendly, like, hi, how you doing? And you may have had a little twinkle, like, oh, he's cute. Is that is that type of thing? Mm-hmm. So you thought he was cute? Oh, yeah. A long time ago? I, I did. And, you know, as we talked, mm. he, he thought the same thing. So, but. So he was like five steps away. You didn't even know. Isn't that weird how in life you're, you never know? You never know. You never know. And like I was saying that I told Kim, I was like, I feel like, I feel like I'm like cheating because it's like, yes, I use the app. But it's like we 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 knew of each other already, but if it had not been for the app, we probably wouldn't not have you know been uh, talking and dating. So. so okay, so now you can say that you are dating now. Yes. <laughs> are you? In, you seem to be really enjoying yourself. You know, Cam. I I am. Um, I'm I'm having a ball. Um, he is a very sweet person. He is a very nice person. Um, really laid back. I even said to him one day, I'm like, mm, this feels too good to be true. This feels too good to be true. But he's just him. And um, yeah, I I, I you, love you know. I, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, a lot of times we have is when we have a checklist, you like, like, I kind of want this, like sugar and spice and everything nice type of thing. So do you, can you, do you really feel like um, he's uh, met some of those things on your list? On your checklist? Yes. Yes. And, and could we both say that we stepped out of our box, like with one another to, when it comes to um, like the physical, um, cause you know, I'm, I'm taller, I'm tall, I'm a tall woman. So we're, you know, we're, we're the same height. I'm, you know, I was used to dating someone that's, you know, at least, you know, that's like this really tall and all of that kind of good stuff. But when you, all of that doesn't, that doesn't face me, that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Um, because I think as women, and as people, you know, men and women, we get caught up in the physical attributes more so than even though the physical, because I am a very visual person, <laughs> even though the physical is is um, important because like I said he, he, he fine. He fine. He fine to me. So, uh, <laughs> OK, fine. But the thing is, we have to also look at the heart of people and 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 I and I can say being a single a woman that had was single for a long time that you look at oh my gosh he doesn't fit he's he's an inch too short he's a he's a maybe ten pounds underweight overweight whatever the case and so basically you're saying you have to look beyond that checklist sometimes and you may just find the person that you are looking for when you are open to being open to getting to know someone. We were talking on our um, earlier, actually on the podcast. Now I remember it's Switch Play TV. (laughs) That's the podcast that I'm on on Mondays. And we were just saying that sometimes you just got to look outside the box. We, when you, um, you, you are going to get certain attributes, but get to know people, be their friend, get to, and there's nothing wrong with, um, dating someone that knows other people that you know, cause what better way to get to know them and have that comfortability as far as spending time and doing things with them when you know that other people that you know, know them, then it's, it gives you a, a certain sense of security in that you feel maybe just a little bit safer than you would meeting someone that you, nobody is connected to at all. Do you agree with that? I do. I, I really agree with that. And I can honestly say, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm having a good time so far. Um, he is very caring. Um, hmm. he, he makes sure that I'm, I'm good. I had a flat tire one time, um, I was I was being greedy. I was on my way to get a, a sweet potato pie from a very known place here in um in Detroit. So mm-hmm. on my way back, 
my tire was like flat. So I pulled up in the gas station and um, I text him. I was like, my tire's flat. So he called me and, you know, want to know where I was. He was coming um, over to me. He um, put you know, some air in my tire. That really didn't, it worked for a minute. But then, you know, it got flat again. So we went to the gas station and um, he called a friend of his that he knows that has a, um, that can tow. And it was so crazy, girl. I, I was like, okay. Well, I said, while we waiting on him, I'm going to get some gas. <laughs> I locked my keys up in the car. I was like, what is going on? It was cold. I was like, what is going on? I told him, I said, I don't use, I, I said, I do, this is not me. I don't know what's going Could on. Did you say that maybe he had you a little bit flustered and maybe I lost your keys? I don't know. I don't know. It could be. But just, Sounds to me like you got a little Clark Kent going there. <laughs> Well, Clark can't go on on there. He's, right. Honey, my tire is flat. I will be there in a moment. Right. I mean, my tire is even flatter, but I have a friend that has a tow truck. He, you know, he he took care of me. And one of the things I really like in a man is a good relationship with his mother and that mm-hmm. he has because um i found it to be really honorable because i knew that he was supposed to do some work you know for her at her house um and you know he made sure i was good i got home um safe and sound my car got towed to the house and he was Mm -hmm. like you know the next day he, he was going to you know give me a um you know take my tire and get a new one but that night um, you know, he went, of course he went, um, over to his mom's because he, he promised that, you know, he helped her out. And I really, so he's him. a man of his word. Yes. yes. Cause even, his mom, so even his mom was like, you could have stayed, you know, but he was like, no, I told you that I would do this. And I was like, yes, <laughs> All right, do what you say, say what you can do. Yes. Don't be. Don't be a perpetrator because so often we meet people's representatives and not who they really are. And for him to put his mother first because he should have, Uh that speaks to his character. Uh And so um, as we're bringing this to a close, Uh I am so excited about you and your selection. You seem like you're very happy and you are totally enjoying yourself. And your smile is saying it all, honey. And those little flicker flickers in those eyes are as well. So you know with that what? being said. Wait a minute. Um, just piggyback and on, on that. Um, it's somebody at my job. She's unfortunately going through a divorce. And so she came up to the job and um, cause she kind of told her what was going on. It, it was mm-hmm. not pretty. Um, and she was like, you know, she showed me like she did like this and it wasn't a ring there. And I was like, girl, I, I feel you. And she's like, what are you talking about? I, I would have known, I would have thought that she have heard about my story, you know? And she, she was like, what are you talking about? I was going to show her my bare um, finger. She was like, for real? I was like, girl, yeah. So um, but she's like, you look happy. I was yeah. like, I said, girl, I am. <laughs> so I know that everybody is different, but um, what would be your relationship advice, if any, that you would have for someone who has gone through um, a, a hurtful breakup? Do you think um, not to, as far as, um, you know, everybody has different timetables for moving on and things of that nature. Um, but what would be your advice to somebody to um, give love a try or um, try just to, to date again? What would you say is a timeline, if any, or is there a timeline really? Um, like you said, it's different for, it's different for everybody. Um, like, don't my thing my my advice would be this if you've gotten out of a, a relationship that just didn't work you know if it was a hurtful painful breakup whatever the case may be don't close yourself off from 
wanting to find love again. Yeah. Um, because it's I, I truly believe it, it is somebody out there for you. It's it's a few somebodies, you know. Um don't close yourself off and get outside of your box. Mm-hmm. And I, and to get back on that, I would say also get outside of your box. Don't close yourself off, but be open and don't carry that hurt over. Don't carry it around with you. It was a song by Erica Badu that says bag lady. Mm. And sometimes when we get out of relationships, we want to carry it around. And we, every person you meet, we want to tell them everything that ever happened to us and how that other person hurt us. When a lot of times we just need to just enjoy the day. Yesterday is gone forever. If that relationship is gone, it's gone. And I'm not negating that you may be hurt and you may be having feelings, hurtful feelings about that. But when you wake up in the morning, the sun shines again and you have a new 24 hours in a day. And like Kalani said, get outside the box. It's okay to get outside the box and nobody can give you a timeline on how long you should not date or like you should just sit around and wallow in self-pity. As we've seen in recent times, life is short. Things you, We never know what's going to happen. So you have to enjoy every day to the fullest. Me and too. you can laugh and still be healing at the same time. You can laugh and still be healing at the same time. Yeah. yeah. But I suggest that, you know, you be, before you get into something new that you are healed, you know, because that, that will um, help a lot. So that way, you know, that you are not getting into a relationship or uh, a dating thing that's, like a, a rebound um, mm-hmm. thing, you know, because you want you want to be totally healed, like get to the place where I'm good, you know, and 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 now and I was, but um, yeah, the, and, and healing and healing is a process for everybody, but I think the main thing that people overlook with healing is sometimes identifying what you need to be healed from and identifying that it's not your fault that things went wrong. Because the bottom line is, is when we're in relationships, we can't control other people. We can only control ourselves. So sometimes it, when it's not your fault, it's not your fault. It's really nothing to heal from because you can't control other people and make them treat you the way that you treat them or be fair to you, unfortunately. But girl, the red lips, the hair is popping. You smiling from ear to ear. And I'm just so glad that the, this lady, what's her name? Kim came into the picture and opened up your eyes to see that there is there's love on the other side of this. There's life on the other side of this. It's fun on the other side of this. And also, like, okay, because this is going to be my last update, y'all. But just in case, because if you do see me come back, be like, hey, y'all, so I'm back on the app. <laughs> then, then you, know. <laughs> you are silly. You are but, silly. <laughs> but, she ain't going to be back on no app, y'all. She's just saying it. Like, <laughs> but other than that. Not, not, um, the way them, not the way them lips is popping, honey, and them ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you silly. But other than that, you know, um, because I said this time around, I'm going to keep my love life private, not secret. There's a difference because people mm-hmm. do know him. Um, you know that he's, I know him. Yes, Cam. But I get it, girl, because I, I keep my I, I keep my relationship private. I think we've been together now for three years, and I think this year is the first time I ever posted anything about that. I put up a picture, I think, and said, happy birthday. But it's just that it's okay to be, and that's that's for everybody out there. It's okay to be private because I've had friends that put their whole entire relationship on mm-hmm. social media and they break up and then they be like devastated. <laughs> and then they keep doing it over and over and they be like, girl, when you gonna learn? Because when I look on, you know, you start looking on people's timelines, not that I do it, but it's more word to look on your timeline and you would. A lot of daddy and everybody, it'd be like, dang, you you in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. And then he was like, so going, I'm going you on fall vacation. real quick, don't you? Girl, come tell me when I go on my, my little vacations and stuff, all, all you're going to see is pictures of me. That's all you're going to see. You don't need to see him. 
y'all is him. Uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah, so it was it was something because we like I said we uh start talking mm-hmm. November fifteenth. So that Saturday we planned a date, but mm-hmm. we met Friday because we just you know we just wanted to see each other. So you're like I already know who you are anyway. Let's go eat. Right. Let's, let's already, just get know, this party familiar. started right. <laughs> We are familiar with one another. And then that Sunday, we went to the escape room for your birthday. Yeah. And, and we had a great time. Had a great and he time. he was cool. He was cool. I was like, yeah, he 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 can roll with. He can roll with. <laughs> and I and that was I, I like that too, because from Cam and um her guy, and he's my big brother now, so um, because he he looks out for me too. And um well, we were like coming out of the escape room. It was me, Cam, and and Cam's guy. We was coming out of the escape room, um, cause he, cause my guy, he was, you know, he he was um back looking at one of the the things, and so your guy was like, I like him, I like yeah. him. Yeah, and see, that's another thing that's important is to stop hiding relationships. Let these people be around people that you know because sometimes I may see something that you can't see or you may see something that I can't see. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we try to be super, super private and I'm not saying tell everybody your business, but in a healthy um, environment with people that you trust. Um, you know, that's important it because is. they can help you um, avoid a whole lot of stuff, you know, if, you know, because sometimes, like, because we, we had a friend who brought somebody along with them, and they were, we were like, whoa, he ho. And mm. that person, he was like, I identified that it was something, but I wasn't sure until we all got together. And then I saw how she was acting with other people and the things that she was saying. And then he knew that that wasn't the relationship for him. He had seen the red flags, but he didn't really see the blood stained banner. Until he had her around other people that, and we were, you know, we are very loving people, and it was just like, oh, mm-hmm. hmm. and he was like, "What you think about this?" Well, since you asked me, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll say it, but I wasn't going to say anything. But since you, since you, you really want to know, right. you know, so you, we just have to um, just be open, be honest, and I'm just glad that you took the. Um, the chance to be open and and, and y'all my mother met him <laughs> now my my mother and my brother very protective of me and rightfully so you know and mm-hmm. I let him know that going in I'm like you know coming from my you know, what happened in the past they like 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 these like who was this trying to get through but um, you know, we went over her house because we had to, you know, he had, again, he was being a sweetheart and he was helping me with something. He's her hero. <laughs> he is. Um, so nice. Very. So, you know, we was over there. We kicked it with my mom for a minute. And she, I, you know, when I got home, I asked her, I was like, what's your, what is your first impression? And she said, he he seems like a nice guy. He seems like really nice. He's laid back. He's easy to talk to. She said he doesn't seem pompous, but but then she then she closed it off with, you know, um, I I just don't trust him right off the bat. So I'm like, okay. But she said, but my first impression was that he it, it was a good one. So yeah, and we thought the same thing. Yeah, he had three yeses, so. And yeah, right for now. Right. <laughs> he better not get rude. I know he's gonna see this, so yeah. And because he, he, no, he knew that I was gonna do this. I, I told him, I was like, you know, I, I said that I was gonna do this back in November, so I had to honor my obligation. So um he asked me, so he said, Well, do you think that he said no, he said, Do you would you recommend the app? I was like, I don't know, you know. But he was like, but do you think that it worked? I was like, yeah, it, it worked. It did work. <laughs> I think that one, it, I think it worked, but it along with a little divine intervention, because sometimes um, the God will move things out of the way so other things can come. And when I say that, I say that to say 
you may meet someone after a breakup or uh, whatever, and that next person may come just to show you that good people do still exist, uh -huh. that um, you are lovable, that you are worthy, that you are valuable. And sometimes that's what people come to teach you. But even along that journey of learning or whatever, just be good to people. Just be good to the people that you meet. Be good to the people that are good to you. And even the people who might not be so good to you, you can be good to them from a distance. From a distance. You can, like, I, right. I put something on um, on my Instagram. And for those who follow me on Instagram, um, you, you, I don't know if you've seen this because it's, it's gotten a few, uh, several likes. And it says, you can forgive people without welcoming them back into your life. Apology accepted, but access denied. And that's true. So, you know, if it's like a toxic person or a person that, you know, it, it that shouldn't be in your life, it's okay mm -hmm. to forgive. It really is. It, you have to forgive, you know, yeah. but, but that don't mean that they can have access to your life. Don't don't give them access. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Kay Marie is happy. She's smiling from ear to ear, y'all. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. For now, I am. For now, I am. It's it's great. She is. She's smiling from ear to ear on this day and every day I've seen her. But yeah. So with that being said. I'm happy that you are enjoying life and you're looking good, girl. Your hair is cute. Your lips is popping. You, you got it going who did, on. Who did, well, who did the hair though? <laughs> well, we don't have to go into all that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you, look, you look great and I'm really Thank happy you. for you. Thank you, sis. So, you are welcome. So we, oh, okay, Marie. <laughs> thank you. So we're going to close this out, y'all. Uh, thank you, Cam, for um, once again coming on and being my guest host for this. And again, y'all, um, if you want to know what app I use, then you can get at me, you can, uh, DM me on Instagram or on Facebook or send me an email, info at Kmarie Podcast, and I'll let you know. I'll let you know which app that I used. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for tuning yeah, in. She, she had 800. I don't know if you're gonna get 800, <laughs> but you might get four. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> so, so, thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast or whatever platform that you're listening to us on. Don't forget that you know we dropped we drop every episode on Wednesday morning. But you can listen a day before on Tuesdays on Spotify. Okay, I try to get that get that up on Spotify. Um, join us next week where we start a whole new series. Uh, February being the love month, I'm gonna have a love series, and I'm gonna have a young um, gentleman on. We're gonna talk about um, men being romantic. I wanted to talk about men being romantic and how to be romantic because a lot of men want to know how do I be romantic because I'm not romantic. But when I post this question on my personal Facebook page, this young man, um, he he came at it with another angle because he was saying that he used to do all of that, but a lot of women take that for granted, you know, by him doing stuff or being romantic. And he says that and he finds that a lot of women find that as being a weakness. I'm like, what? So we're going to talk about that, y'all. Um, girl, if you find that as a weakness, you're not that intelligent. Still, that means you yeah, are you are yeah. coming from dysfunctional relationships and you don't yeah. know what to do. But yeah. that's another show. We'll have to tell you that on another show because mm -mm, yes. you're crazy. <laughs> So join but anyway, Kay, we are glad that you, you know, up and running. Keep on smiling, girl. And thank you for having me on. Um, and again, um, I'm on Switch Play TV, which is on Podcastic. That's the name of the podcast. And we air every Monday live at 7 p.m. to 8.15. And don't forget to vote for them, right? 
Yes, you can vote for us on um, Ucult TV. It's an app, and um, we are up for the best podcast in Detroit. So we're excited about that. We got nominated. All right. Sounds good. So thank you. So thank you, everybody. And don't forget, uh-huh. Wanted Love. Yes, Wanted Love. For wanted those Love, who are, the movie. Those who are local <laughs> um, in the Metro Detroit area, we're going to have... Um, Romance at the Riviera, the Riviera um, Theater in Farmington, downtown Farmington. So we still we have a few tickets left, y'all, just a few. And mm-hmm. um, it's a going to be a nice red carpet event. Uh, we're going to have a discussion, panel. discussion panel with the cast and crew and a relationship panel. So you do not want to miss that. Um, if Again, like I said this before, if you do not have a Valentine's date, you know, get, get a whole bunch of your girls and just go out, you know, um, grab your um, your mom, grab your dad, whoever, you know, just come on out. And or if you do have somebody, your, your boo, your significant other or whoever you are cuffing with this season. Um, <laughs> <laughs> come and get some relationship advice. Come on, come on and uh, get your tickets at wantedlovemovie.com. Uh, um. And on that note, everybody, I will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Oh, let's go. Let's go. It's time to turn up your radio. Turn up the radio. Just so you know. Just so you know. It kicking in with K. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah.